I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in the book, and then slip it into my bag. Huh, we're down to two. I'll start with Natsuki. I told Natsuki I was interested in her poems yesterday. It's probably only fair if she if I shared mine with her first. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> was that supposed to be scary? What the fuck? <laughs> oh my god! Snake, if you're not gonna drink this club seriously, then go home! What, I ask? Harsh. Natsuki continues, what? You expect me to believe that you actually put effort into this? Natsuki says, do you think I'm stupid? I'm not a writer, I respond. Maybe it's not very good, but yeah, I did put an effort. We all start somewhere, right? If you're still proud of the first poem you ever wrote, then I'd like to read it. Natsuki is startled. Painful to think about, I ask. She says, fine. Well, sorry. It, you'll get better anyway, she continues. I tell you what to improve. <laughs> I just keep thinking about how stupid that was. Oh. But you're better off just trying again. I say, fair enough. Well, to each their own, I guess. Natsuki says, well, anyway. I guess I gotta share mine now. Knowing you, you'll probably think it's stupid. Yep, it's the same Eagles can fly, so she hasn't changed. She says, yeah. I told you that you weren't going to like it. I said, I like it. What? She asks. Just be honest. I say, I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? She says, well, because. Everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of the poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly, says Natsuki. I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. <laughs> so I decided to write about it. I say, yeah, I understand. <laughs> but the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Natsuki continues, like I said, it for a rhyme at the end, but they made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. I say, so you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. She says, that's what it means to be a pro. <laughs> I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? I say, yeah, I guess not. I decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really... <laughs> I don't really care how everyone, how old everyone is. God, I'm sorry. I need to think about something else. <sighs> but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Okay. You don't have to look at her anymore. Hi, Snake, says Monica. Having a good time so far? Yeah, actually, this place is hilarious. She says, good, glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? I say, all right, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'd much, I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. She says, anyway, want to share your poem with me? I say, it's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. She laughs. Don't worry, Snake. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? But it's a sort of bear that we'll all learn to get past soon. I say, yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. She says, mm-hmm. Great job, Snake. It's got an O in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't ex expect you to go for something so deep. She says, I guess I underestimated you. I say it's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That way, it always counts when I put in some effort. She laughs. That's not very fair. I say, well... Or she continues, well, I guess it worked anyway. 
You know what? That Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism. Sometimes I feel like Yuri's mind is totally detached from reality. I don't mean that like it's a bad thing, though. But sometimes I get the impression that she's just totally given up on people. She spent so much time in her own head that it's probably a much more interesting place for her. But that's why she gets so happy when you treat her with a lot of kindness. I don't think that she's used to being indulged like that. She must be really starved for social interaction, so don't blame her for coming on a little strongly. Like earlier. I think if she gets too stimulated, she ends up withdrawing and looking for alone time. Suddenly, the door opens. Yuri, says Monica. Yuri says, I'm back. Did I miss anything? She says, not really. Well, we all started sharing our poems with each other. Eh, she says. Already? I'm sorry for being late. Monica says, no need to apologize. We still have plenty of time, so I'm more, more glad that you took all the time you needed. Yuri says, all right. Thanks, Monica. I suppose I should get my poem now. Monica says, anyway, did you want to read my poem? Don't worry, I'm not very good. I say, You're, you sound pretty confident for someone who claims to not be very good. She says, well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I say, I see. Well, let's read it then. Okay, this is the same poem. Wait. Wait, is it? No, this is different. This is like a continuation. Hole in wall. Wasn't it hole in the wall? Hole in wall. But he wasn't looking at me. Confused, I practically glance at my surroundings. But my burned eyes can no longer see color. Are there others in this room? Are they talking? Or are they simply poems on flat sheets of paper? The sound of frantic scrawling playing tricks on my ears. The room begins to crinkle, closing in on me. The air I breathe dissipates before it reaches my lungs. I panic. There must be a way out. It's right there. He's right there. Swallowing my fears, I brandish my pen. So, what do you think? I say, hmm, it's very freeform, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. She said, she laughs. It's okay. Yeah, that kind of style is getting pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it could be really powerful. I say, what was the inspiration behind this one? Ah, she says, well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany, I ask. Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous, about, nervous to talk about deep stuff like that, because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, she says, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on one on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on the paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. I'm just wait every every time it seems like a natural stopping point, I'm expecting something horrific to happen. That's our advice for today. Thanks for listening. Oh, Yuri's the only one left. As Yuri reads the poem, I notice her eyes lighten. Exceptional, she says. I say, eh? What was that? She says, Yuri says, did I say that out loud? Yuri covers her mouth, but then ends up covering her whole face. He's going to hate me, she whispers. I say, you really didn't do anything wrong, Yuri. She says, eh? That's... I guess you're right. What am I getting so nervous for? She laughs. Yuri takes a breath. So, what kind of writing experience do you have? Your use of imagery and metaphors indicates you've written a lot of poetry before. I say, really? Wow, that's a huge compliment coming from you. This is actually my first time, really. She says, huh? Yuri stares at me blankly, then looks at my, po at my poem again. Well, I know that, she says. I just meant, um... She trails off, unable to find an excuse. She traces her fingers along the words in the poem, as if breaking it down more thoroughly. Yeah. Okay. This is the reason I was able to tell. It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick up a 
writing style that's separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two together. The end result is both that the style and the expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone, and she sounds like an expert. Yuri continues, of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little bit biased, though. I ask, biased? How? She says, um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. I say, it's fine. Not sure if Yuri is apologizing to, apologizing to, ah, to herself, to Meme, or to Natsuki. I say, do you mind if I read your poem now? She says, please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily, as if that's a rare opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Uh, let's see... Okay, this is the same this is the same poem. She says, I'm sorry I have such terrible handwriting. What? That's true. You do have terrible handwriting. I wasn't thinking that at all, except for the parts where I was. She says, but it took you a long time to read. I clicked almost instantly, woman. I say, ah, well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. She says, eh? That's a relief. I continue, also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. She says, it wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Not at all, I continue. She says, I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest, since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to, to digest, I suppose. I say, are you into ghosts, Yuri? She laughs. Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Snake. Really? I must have totally missed the point. She says, well, I suppose you only, you did only glance over it, after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of a poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost. Ling lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past. And soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn, putting it that way, I say. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. Eh? She says. It's nothing, really. Yours was impressive, too, so... Nah, I say. If anything, I could probably learn a thing or two from you. She says, you think so? I say, yeah, of course. Ah, you know, she says. I was really nervous about doing all this. But in the end, I enjoyed it. I'm going to keep doing my best for you, Snake. I say, ah, me too. Phew, I say. I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can sit up to theirs. That was odd. I thought the music did something funny, but that's just me. This is a literature club, after all. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room... Wait a minute. Why did my background flicker? Hmm. Window stuff. Across the room, Monica is writing something in her notebook. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, showing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. You heard something too sick, Dan? Okay. I thought I was... I wasn't sure if I had just talked over it, or if the music had actually done something weird. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Says Natsuki. Yuri says, eh? Um, did you say something? Natsuki says, oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Yuri says, ah, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute, says Natsuki. But did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. 
How can that be cute? She said, Yuri responds, I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh, yeah, says Natsuki. You may need... <clears throat> One second. You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it didn't really come out nice at all. Here says, um, well, I do have a couple of suggestions. Mitsuki says, humph. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Oh, before she said Sayori, but now she's saying Monica liked it. And Snake did, too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, Yuri says, excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. Don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring. Which I haven't yet. Natsuki's mad. Yuri continues, and Snake liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh, says Natsuki. Didn't realize we were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Yuri says, eh? That's not what I... You. You're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Snake appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Natsuki says, huh? And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? Yuri says, no. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Shots fired. Natsuki says, well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Snake sh started showing up. There's that magic thing again. Maybe I'm overreading the word magic, but I just don't trust it. Monica says, um, Natsuki, that's a little... And they both yell at her. This doesn't involve you. But there's no Sayori to stop this. Yuri says, taking out your own insecurities and others like that. You really act as young, young as you look, Natsuki. Uh-oh. Me? Look who's talking, you wanna be edgy bitch! <laughs> edgy, says Yuri. Sorry that my lifestyle is too much for someone of your mental age to comprehend. See, says Natsuki. Just saying that proves my point. Most people learn to get over themselves after they graduate middle school, you know. Yuri says if you want to prove anything, then stop harassing others with your sickening attitude. You think you can counterbalance your own toxic personality just by dressing and acting cute? The only cute thing about you is how hard you try. Natsuki, whoa, be careful, you might cut yourself on that edge, Yuri. <clears throat> oh, my bad, you already do, don't you? Yuri says, <laughs> responds, did you just accuse me of cutting myself? What the fuck is wrong with your head? Natsuki says, yeah, go on. Let's make you everything you really think. I'm sure he'll be head over heels for you after this. <laughs> Suddenly, Yuri turns toward me, as if she'd just noticed I was standing here. Snake, she says. She, she's just trying to look, make me look bad. Natsuki says, that's not true. She started it. Oh, that's all the stuff I said before. I have to pick one. We're, we're going Yuri. Yeah, I said Yuri. Yeah, game. I said Yuri. I still said Yuri. I'm still going with Yuri. Yep. Oh no! Hey, Monica. <laughs> okay. Monica is saying nothing at us. Um. Hey, Snake. Why don't we step outside for a little bit? Okay. Sorry about that. They really shouldn't have tried to get you involved. It's probably better for us to stay out of this. We'll go back inside once they're done yelling. She laughs. Some president I am, right? I can't even confront my own member club members properly. I just wish I was able to be a little more assertive sometimes. But I never have it in me to put my foot down against others. I have a feeling, Monica, that you can stop everything that's happening and you won't because you're an idiot. You understand, right? Anyway... If this makes you want to spend less time with the others, then that's fine. 
I'd be happy to spend time with you instead. Suddenly, Natsuki runs out of the classroom. Natsuki is in tears. She quickly runs away. Oh dear, says Monica. Well, it looks like they're done. Uh, okay, so Monica seems like the villain. Pretty, pretty, mm, pretty villain. Didn't mean it, says Yuri. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. Yuri is rocking back and forth in her desk with her palms on her forehead. Wait, how does that work? I want to see that visual. I say, Yuri? Yuri says, I didn't mean it. I, I say, I believe you. I have no idea what Yuri might have said to Natsuki. Or did. Snake, says Yuri. Please don't hate me. Please. I'm not like this. There's something wrong with me today. Monica says, it's fine, Yuri. We know you didn't mean it. Besides, I'm sure Natsuki will forget about it by, forget all about it by tomorrow. Completely. Anyway, the meeting is over, so you can go home now if you want. Yuri looks at me like she wants to say something, but she keeps glancing at Monica. You can go first, Monica, says Yuri. I'd like to stay a little bit longer. Monica says, I'm the president, so I should be the last one out. I'll wait for you to be done. Yuri, well, I'm the vice president, so please let me take that responsibility for today. Monica says, it kind of sounds like you don't want me around for something, Yuri. Yuri says, it's not that. It's not that. I just... I didn't get much of a chance to discuss my book with Snake. It would just be embarrassing with you listening. Monica... Oh! That... that Whoa! What's going on there? Is that an exasperated sigh? Monica says, I guess I really don't have a choice, do I? Yuri says, I'm sorry for causing trouble. But I really appreciate... Ooh. Monica disapproved. Uh, a little bit. But hey! I guess we're writing the poem for tomorrow. That's fine. Yeah, so... Um, let's keep trying for Yuri. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna keep on keeping on. Just, you know, not gonna really question anything that just happened. Uh, these are all the typical words. Oh, this one's hard. Dazzle? Damn it! I always mix one up. At least one. Eternity... Dream? Yep. I would think dream's simple enough for Natsuki, but I guess not. And vivid, yeah. So another another one to nineteen. We're gonna do another save, just so we have another recent one. <laughs> I feel bad, <laughs> sick Dan. I feel bad for Natsuki, even though she to destroyed Yuri there. Okay, another day passes, and attempt the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Yuri says, Welcome back, Snake. Ah, hi, Yuri, I say. Not sure if it's me or if, or if it's Yuri's expression. But the weight of yesterday's quarrel still hangs in the air a little. Yuri says, um... Yuri glances over her shoulder, looking around the room. Atsuki is re reading manga at a desk. And surprisingly, Monica isn't here yet. Suddenly, Yuri takes my arm and pulls me into the corner, pulls me to the corner of the room. Oh, I don't think we've seen this shot before. About yesterday, she says. I... I really need to apologize. Nothing like that has ever happened before. And something just came over me, I guess. I wasn't acting mentally sound. Please don't think we're usually like this. Not just me, but Natsuki as well. I say, Yuri, I'm happy that you were considerate and apologized. You don't have to worry too, uh, You don't have to worry too much. Even though I've only been here a couple days, I could tell something was off yesterday. 
Maybe we were just a little extra sensitive because it was our first time sharing poems. But whatever it was, it didn't make me think any less of you. I had already decided that there's no way you can be a bad person. And that was proven because I hit her button the maximum amount of times. And now that you're apologizing, I know you really didn't mean it. Ah, says Yuri. Snake. Don't say those kinds of things so frankly. They make me a little too happy. I'm really glad that you're such an understanding person. And I'm really glad that you joined this club. Everything is a little bit brighter with you around, and... Ah. Sorry, what am I saying right now? I just... Natsuki says, Hey, have you guys seen Monica? You're... you're restartled. I say no, I haven't. I was also kind of wondering where she was. Man, says Natsuki. Yuri, I'm guessing you haven't either. Yuri's silent. Yuri is clearly taken aback by how calmly Natsuki is addressing her. No, I haven't. Natsuki says, geez, this isn't like her at all. I know it's stupid, but I can't help but worry a little bit. What, says Natsuki. Why are you looking at me like that? Yuri says, um, Natsuki, about yesterday. I just wanted to apologize. I promise I didn't mean any of the things I said. And I'll do my best to stay under control from now on. So... Oh. Natsuki says, Yuri, what the heck are you talking about? Did you do something yesterday? Eh, says Yuri. Natsuki says, geez, whatever's on your mind, I'm sure it was nothing. I don't even remember anything bad happening. You're the kind of person who worries too much about the little things, aren't you? Yuri says, but... Natsuki continues, I'll accept your apology anyway, if it helps you feel better about it. Besides, it's kind of nice to hear it since I was always afraid you secretly hated me or something like that. She giggles. Yuri says, no, not at all. I don't hate you. Natsuki laughs. Well, you're kind of weird, but I don't hate you either. Natsuki turns to me. You're still on trial, though. Boy. Hey, I say. Suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry, says Monica. Ah, there you are, I say. Monica continues. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Nah, I say. Well, Natsuki was. I was not, she says. Monica just laughs. Natsuki continues. What took you so long, anyway? <clears throat> Monica says, Ah, uh, well, my last period was study today was study hall. To be honest, I just kind of lost track of time. She laughs again. That's what he says. That makes no sense, though. You would have just heard the bell. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. Monica says, I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano, says Yuri. I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. One second. I'm just trying to see. Is there anything hidden in the back over there on the left? I don't think so. Oh, you know what's weird? I just noticed the only person's ears we can see are Yuri's. Anyway, Monica says, Ah, don't give me more credit than I deserve. I guess I've been practicing for a while, but I'm still not really good at it. Not really good yet. Yuri says, That must require a lot of dedication. So, I'm still <sighs> impressed. Well, thanks, Yuri, says Monica. Natsuki says, you should play something for us sometime. Monica laughs, and then looks at me. Well, I am working on writing a song, but it's not quite done yet. Maybe once I get a little bit a little bit better, I will. I say, that sounds cool. I look forward to it. Monica says, is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Snake. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah, I say. I didn't mean to put any I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. She laughs. Don't worry. I was hoping I could share it with you event anyway. I guess that's why I've been practicing so much recently. I see, I say. I say that a lot. My character says I see a lot. Anyway, I'm not sure if Monica was referring to the whole club or just me. In that case, best of luck. Thanks, she says. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? I say no, not, not really. I chose not to bring up any of the weird shit the three of us were talking about. Besides, Natsuki has already went off into the closet that we're staring at. Snake, says Yuri. Um... Since your compliments put me in a good mood, I was wondering if fucking cat. I was wondering if you would like to spend some time together today. I mean, in the club. I say, yeah, definitely. I planned out it anyway. She says, okay. Can we start now? Let's find a place to sit. Ah, she says, being a little forceful, aren't I? I'm sorry. My heart just won't stop pounding for some reason. Don't worry about it, I say. If anything, it's nice to see you have so much energy. Yeah, she says, but. I need to try to calm down. I won't be able to focus on reading like this. I say, take your time. Yuri takes a deep breath and then pulls a copy of the book out of her bag. Actually, I have a request. 
Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all, I say. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a, water, a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with the filter inside. Can you hold this for a second, she asks. I say sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk and then I'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Yuri says, okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. I say, ah, I might as well walk with you. She says, that's okay, you stay here. It won't take long. That's different. Pitcher in hand, Yuri hurries out of the classroom. Monica says, ah, did Yuri leave you again? I say, no, it's not like that this time. She's just filling up the water pitcher to make tea. Oh, okay. Sorry for misunderstanding. Monica's like, hey, when's that bitch out of the picture? Ten minutes pass. Yuri said it wouldn't take long. Is something holding her up? I'm bored just waiting here, so I decide to go look for her. Let's see, I say. The most logical place for you to be would be... Would to be, would be, the nearest water fountain. I start heading down the hallway. Ha ha. Uh, heavy breathing, I'd assume. What's that noise? It's coming from around the corner. It sounds like breathing. Oh, Jesus. Swall memer. Oh, thank you for that cheer. I appreciate it. I, th <laughs> I thought the Estes noise was coming from the game, and I'm like, what the... F That's not good. Because I can imagine... What's happening around this corner? A sharp inhale. That timing is fucking perfect. A sharp inhale, like someone is sucking the air through their teeth. Are they in pain? I reach the corner and peer around it. Yuri? I ask. Oh, jeez. Kias is Yuri. Uh, everything just backed up a bit. Okay. Yuri says, I'm back. Thanks for waiting patiently. Snake, do you like oolong tea? Ah, uh, yeah, I say. Anything is fine. Very well, says Yuri. 